Hello and welcome to Psyched, the show where we explore psychedelics through social, economic, and political perspectives. next speaker. So next up, we have James Lanthier, a seasoned technology executive with strong expertise in corporate finance, public markets, and M&A. Most recently, Mr. Lanthier was a co-founder and CEO of Future Fertility, an innovative early stage developer of AI applications for human infertility. As a C-suite executive, Mr. Lanthier has assisted in the growth and successful exit of numerous technology-enabled businesses through the public markets, including Mood Media, the world's largest in-store media provider, and Fun Technologies, a pioneer in online casual games. James, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to Psyched. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, you're good. Okay, super. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me and, and uh, really enjoyed listening to the other panelists so far. Um, a great group of speakers. Um, I, I know we're running a little, a little over. I'll, I'll try to keep this talk um, on the shorter side. So um, I'm the CEO of a business called Mindset Pharma. Uh, Mindset is a drug discovery business that's focused on developing uh, new psychedelic drugs. And I'm going to talk about why we believe that uh, new psychedelic drug discovery is critically important to the overall development of psychedelic medicine space. Um, first of all, I think it's, it's useful to, to talk about uh, what, we, what we mean when we say drug discovery. Um, when we talk about rational or, or structural drug design. We're, we're talking about applying uh, modern medicinal chemistry to known compounds or to known structures to try to advance them and to improve on them for the purposes of making uh, better medications. And, and that's what we're trying to do. Um, and it's, it's an old example, but a, a great example and one that I think is instructive for us in, in the space. Uh, in the psychedelic space is aspirin. So if you go all the way back to, you know, the ancient Egyptians, there's records of, of people using the willow bark to, to, uh, to relieve their pain. Um, you know, go on to the, the ancient Greeks and you have Hippocrates, uh, you know, writing about tea uh, being made from the bark um, of the willow tree. And you know, people are, are puking their guts out uh, from drinking this stuff, but they're living in a world with um, you know, really no alternatives for pain relief. So it's probably an acceptable trade-off. Um, but we, we have to jump you know, all the way forward to, to the 19th century where um, you know, the science starts to, to come around um, where you know, scientists can, can actually start to to get at the question of kind of why and how um, you know the willow tree is is helpful for pain, um, but even then it takes you know seventy years for the French and, and German chemists uh, studying uh, you know the chemistry to go from salicin to salicylic acid, and and in their trials around salicylic acid they managed to to put a, a, a bunch of people in comas, which is obviously. Um, you know, not a great outcome for clinical trials. Um, and then eventually to, to develop acetylsalicylic acid um, as a way to, to deal with uh, uh, the puking and, and, and the comas, but still relieving, you know, people's pain. Um, and it's that acetylsalicylic acid, which is patented in, in 1900 uh, by Bayer and has come, comes to be uh, named aspirin, and goes on to become, you know, one of the, the top selling um, medications of all time because it can be manufactured and distributed at scale, um, and because it has doesn't have the same range of side effects as the original natural substance. Um, 
And I think, uh, you know, this, this example is instructive for us, um, you know, because they were able to, to take a natural substance and create something that could benefit, you know, a much larger group of people with, with fewer limitations. And that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to create essentially an, an aspirin for, for mental health. We're trying to create drugs that can address, um, you know, these critical problems for the largest pop possible, uh, you know, population groups. We're, we're not trying to replace the, you know, original substances or somehow take, you know, ownership of them. And we do this work, you know, acknowledging the role that uh, the indigenous cultures have played in the world's understanding uh, and appreciation of, 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 um, of psychedelic drugs and of, of psychedelic experiences, you know, and, and the work that the not-for-profit research groups have done in establishing uh, you know, the therapeutic benefit of the drugs um, and, and of their safety and of really kind of shifting gradually over time um, public and, and regulatory opinion towards a more favorable you know, view of, um, of psychedelic drugs. And we wouldn't be here without their, their efforts. Now, you know, you might be skeptical, you know, given how powerful the, the classic uh, you know, psychedelics are, you know, why are our new drugs uh, important? And if, if all the classic psychedelics are in the public domain and, and are in, you know, later stage, um, you know, clinical trials, what do we, what do we need new drugs for? Um, and I think that's a reasonable point of view, but I think actually there's, there's a couple of, of really kind of key reasons why the ongoing development of, of new psychedelics is actually really important and really important, not just for any one given company, but, but important for, um, for the development of the space as a whole. And, and I guess the first reason would be that I think, you know, drug, new drug discovery is important because the existing psychedelics, the classic psychedelics could, could be improved. Um, and you've heard some examples about these in, in the presentation so far, but really, you know, let's take two, two of the better known drugs. Um, you know, with psilocybin, there, there are really two macro issues to address. You know, one is its metabolic profile. Um, you know, psilocybin is, is metabolized into the active, the psychoactive compound, um, the psilocin, but, but it's also, um, it also breaks down into, you know, a whole array of, of other, uh, you know, metabolites and, and not all of them are, are helpful. Um, there's likely you know, fast and slow metabolizers of, of psilocybin and psilocin, which is going to make it really difficult to, to find the right dose for all patients. And, and in a, you know, an ideal version of, of psilocybin would address, you know, this issue. Um, the, the second issue that's, that's critical is, is cost. And I think I'm probably stating the obvious here but to folks in, in the industry are familiar with the space, but, the cost to produce GMP grade psilocybin is quite high. And, and this is an area where uh, I think innovation is gonna be essential if we're gonna get these drugs in the hands of the, the millions of people who need them. Um, if, if you look at MDMA, I mean, MDMA, as we know, has a cardiotoxicity issues, uh, you know, along uh, with, with thermal issues. And a better MDMA would be, you know, designed, I think, to, to minimize these effects. And these are just two examples. The, the psychedelic, you know, universe is obviously quite large. Um, and the, the second reason I think why new psychedelics are important is because they'll be patentable. And patentable drugs really are, are um, uh, I know it, it's, a, it's a difficult word, but and I think they're necessary to, to attract the capital which is needed to, to move the space forward. And, you know, it may seem anathema to, to a lot of, of, of people in the space, and I understand that, but um, the psychedelic space really does need big pharma dollars and expertise to, to actually move it forward. Um, the the not-for-profit groups have done an incredible job, but we're probably at a point where, where private sector investment can really act as a, a force multiplier on their efforts. And, and really move it forward. Um, the pharmaceutical industry has, you know, the expertise in later stage clinical trials that are obviously critical to getting regulatory approval. 
Um, but they also, you know, are experts in every part of, of the, the value chain and taking a drug from, you know, from ideation all the way to market and, and getting physician, getting it into his hands and getting, um, you know, them to use it. And, and they have the balance sheet to support these activities, but, but all of the really is predicated on, on um, them selling drugs with, with intellectual property rights. Um, you know, as much as psilocybin is a, a breakthrough drug, we, I don't think, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll see when IP protected drugs come to market, that's when you'll, you'll really see, um, you know, pharmaceutical companies, you know, move with, with conviction. And I believe that, you know, the existence of, of differentiated, you know, unique psychedelics is, is really going to be, um, you know, the turning point in the market. Um, and and I think if you think about the the mission that that you know we're on, um, and it's been said before, but really whatever we can do to get these drugs, um, whether it's the the classic drugs or, or their analogs, into the market faster, um, you know, is absolutely essential. The the mental health uh, indications that these drugs seem to treat um, affect you know huge swaths of the world's population you know people with chronic depression take their own lives you know every day and these have the potential to avert these deaths um the third reason why i think psychedelic drug discovery is new drug discovery is important is because you know the new drugs will actually help um the entire space and will help legitimize the original substances we're still living in the shadow of richard nixon and, and ronald reagan who lump these drugs into the same category as drugs that were, you know, horrifically, um, you know, destructive for people. Um, and, and because of that, you know, misguided effort, there's, there's a lasting stigma to them that's, you know, not easily, um, you know, overcome. I think there's a large middle ground of people who, you know, are, are open to being won over on the idea of, of using a psychedelic to, to cure a, a mental health problem, but um, they're going to take their cues from regulators and scientists. So, so the more the more scientific work that goes into um, pushing the advancement of of new drugs and the development of new drugs, I think will all will all you know lend itself to to legitimizing the entire universe and 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 the original substances. And I guess lastly. You know, new drug discovery is really important because um, you know, we've only just begun. Um, you know, by necessity, the last few decades of research started with the well-known psychedelics. As we know, there's many more psychedelics out there, and there's no limit, no reason to to limit our our, our research to them. Um, you know, for PTSD, uh, you know, for example, who is who's not to say that there isn't you know, a, a better version of MDMA or, or a better version of a different psychedelic um, that, that uh, you know, that couldn't do a better job of treating it. You know, the, the drugs are so potent that, you know, improved versions of any of them could represent, you know, not only a great leap forward for mental health, but for, you know, other indications that haven't been studied yet either. Um, so just a little bit about mindset or our mission is to develop and, and discover new psychedelic drugs. And we were established by people who've spent their whole careers um, in, in discovering and, and developing new drugs. So Dr. Malik Slassi is our medicinal chemist. Um, Dr. Slassi has over 30 years of, of experience uh, successfully identifying small molecule drug candidates across uh, you know, many different therapeutic areas. Joe Rujo is our chief scientist. Joseph is the, the CEO and the founder of InterVivo Solutions. Uh, so the other side of the coin of, of kind of the drug development process. Um, they're a top translational animal model, CRO. Um, and he has decades of experience assisting businesses through the preclinical drug development process with a, a specialization in, in CNS drugs. And between the two of them, they've you know, identified and patented hundreds of novel chemical entities um, that have seen their way into, into becoming, uh, you know, new drugs and have seen lots of different approaches for applying rational drug design to try to, to improve on existing drugs and, and improve outcomes. Um, and so where we are today, 
is that based on, on some of their insights, we filed some patent applications on some uh, novel chemical structures that are broadly uh, you know, inspired psilocybin, but are designed um, to more specifically target the, the key uh, receptors for psychedelic activity. We've synthesized uh, a group of compounds under those applications and are moving them through, through clinical, preclinical testing. And what's really exciting based on, on um, these tests and the data that we're getting, we have some, some good reasons to believe that they're gonna be um, significantly uh, more potent than, than psilocybin itself. Um, so potentially could deliver a psychedelic experience with a, with a lower dosage. Um, it's, these are really promising early results. We're, we're hoping to, to um, uh, share some more information about them uh, soon. Um, but we think they could be a major step towards the goal of, of developing a, a, a psychedelic medicine that could be accessible by everyone who needs it. We've also developed some, uh, some new innovations around some manufacturing processes um, for psychedelic medicines and for, for, for some other new chemical entities. And uh, we're expecting to, to make some additional intellectual property filings around those shortly. This is a really exciting time for the field. Um, and I think we'll see lots more innovations from uh, the great companies and organizations in the sector. Um, and I really appreciate you uh, having me on uh, today. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to, to take you know, any questions or, or connect with anybody uh, you know, later on. Yeah, thanks so much, James. Um, so I think that we, I have a couple questions and I know the audience does as well. Um, let's see. Uh, so one of the questions, and I'll extend on this one uh, as well, is basically asking, you know, a huge part of the psychedelic experience are uh, trips, both the good and the bad. Um, can we get all the benefits from a drug that tries to cancel out the side effects uh, or part of the experience of traditional compounds? Right. So, so, so to be clear, what we've designed, uh, what we've designed, ha we, we haven't designed it with a, with a view to, to canceling out any, any aspect of the psychedelic effect. And in, in fact, um, you know, it's been designed really to enhance the psychedelic effect or make it stronger, if anything. Um, so I may not have, I may not have been clear on that. What we've tried to do in the design is to, is to limit the, the diversity of, of, of the other metabolites, which, which we think actually could, could potentially interfere with the psychedelic effect. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to extend on that question a little bit by asking, you know, what, one of the things that you mentioned at the beginning was, um, you know, vomiting, for instance, this is something that we see, especially with uh, indigenous ritual, uh, rituals, indigenous plant medicines, um, where in those cases, you know, the, the vomiting is actually seen as part of the, the experience as well as part of the healing process of being able to physically purge the trauma that's within you. Um, I'm wondering yep. if you have ideas for, you know, how can we design um, trials to really be able to uh, see, you know, how, how much of an aspect does something like vomiting play in, in the reduction of trauma um, without necessarily, you know, changing the compounds too significantly um, and really being able to make good comparisons uh, to, to see what is and is not effective in the experience. That's a really great question, and I think that's that's that is information that's going to be our our focus has really been on the design and on the preclinical aspects of of the drug development process. That's all that's all something that's to be considered in the in the design of of the clinical studies. But it, it's a great great question, and I don't have the answer for it. But it's something that's going to have to be considered for sure. Mm -hmm. When you look at kind of the global market for drug development, drug discovery, uh, where do you see the, the major hubs being for, um, for specifically, you know, psychedelic medications? Do you think that uh, it's going to be kind of the, you know, resource rich type countries that we've seen uh, before? Do you think that any country that maybe is more comfortable with plant medicines might have a leg up on some other countries? How do you see kind of the global landscape of drug development unfolding? Well, I, I think you look at, 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 the, the landscape so far, you know, you're, you're seeing, you're seeing it, it unfold um, in, 
it in those more resource rich countries um, where you know where, where you where you have uh, you know strong um, uh, you know medicinal chemistry uh, talent so typically that's you know clustered around um, you know top research institutions I think I think I think frankly Toronto is is going to play a role um, given um, given the you know the interest in financing uh, companies and and the experience with the with the cannabis um, industry I, I'm 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 not it, I'd, you'd like to see some of this develop in in countries where um, there is a, a stronger tradition of of medicinal, um, you know, plant based medicine. But I think the the the, the work is really going to be on the on the on the chemistry side. Is is my guess. So I, I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I can foresee it involving more in in kind of the the wealthier countries. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the, you know, technology companies that are needed to really be able to experiment with, you know, large data sets um, to, to develop new compounds, new drugs, do you think that a lot of those teams are going to pop up from kind of, you know, um, more uh, infrastructurally sound pharmaceutical industries? Or do you think that we're going to see, uh, you know, companies evolving specifically for psychedelic drug discovery from the technology side of things? I, I think with the, with the power of, of you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence i think it'll be you know nimble teams that have um maybe that have some some had some uh you know experience look at, looking at uh, the cannabis space um it, that are gonna you know develop and i'm already we're already seeing them um you know develop um platforms specifically geared for um for psychedelics mm -hmm. Well, one question from the audience is, uh, you know, it seems that a lot of the work that you're doing is similar to MindMed, uh, for instance, or another one of these um, types of large, um, large companies. We, uh, what the audience member is wondering is, you know, how is Mindset uh, Pharma different from that um, in, in a variety of, uh, of ways? Well, great, great question. So, so, um, so I guess we're, where we would differ is really our, our work is on the upfront, um, you know, the upfront drug design point. Um, the, a lot of the other companies in the space aren't necessarily focused or haven't necessarily been focused on, on actually the, the upfront, you know, IP creation piece. So we've filed a couple of, as I said, we've, we've, you know, filed some, some, uh, some patent applications on some novel, you know, chemical entities, we're expecting to file more. Um, we don't see ourselves necessarily as building a, the infrastructure to take, um, you know, these, these uh, compound designs, you know, through later stage clinical trials. And I think that's, that's probably more of a focus for, um, you know, for MindMed and, and some of the other better known companies. We're really focused on the upfront IP design point. We think that um, there's, there's such an opportunity for uh, you know, for develop for discovering new psychedelic drugs, and there's so many psychedelics out there that there's there, there's a lot more work to be done beyond the the initial uh, you know compound families that we've identified. So that that's our focus. Mm -hmm, definitely. Well, James, thank you so much for sharing with us for joining us today, and uh, looking forward to chatting more offline. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Bye, bye, James. Bye. Right.